Hey, hey, welcome back to the channel. Many of you are probably familiar with a video I posted about 18 months ago going over exactly how to construct this modular panel fence with Dado Groove you see here behind me. Well, we're now going to call that part one because today I'm going to take a little extra time out to develop a part two over, you guessed it, stain protection and a few methods about that. If you're unfamiliar with part one, check the description below. I have a link there as well as a link to a newly developed Dropbox that allows you access to my PDF construction details as well as an Excel cost generator I developed based on this specific build per linear foot. Literally all you have to do is type in linear feet, it spits out a bill of material and a number at the end as far as cost and cost per foot. I did 207 foot for about $8 a foot, which isn't too bad considering in the area it was about $19 a foot for someone to come out and do it. So you can save yourself a little bit of money. But before I get into any stain information about products and methods about doing it, I want to take a little bit of time out to go over some questions and concerns that developed out of part one. I had no idea that part one was going to gain its popularity that it did, not necessarily as views, but as far as around the world that it went. I've sent over a thousand emails of construction details to places as far as China, Russia, Europe, all around South America, it, anywhere and all over the place. It's an unreal what YouTube has allowed that video to do. Had no idea. But with all those views came a lot of questions and concerns about the construction. So rather than wait any more time, I'm going to give you a little bit of my 18 month review about this fence. And it might give you a little bit more confidence about your own build. So stick around. All right. The number one question when it comes to this fence is how's it holding up? Well, in 18 months, I could say it's probably just as sturdy as the day that I put it together and neither one of my dogs has escaped. So that was priority number one anyway. But we'll say that we have endured a number of windstorms, including Tropical Storm Amelda, which left majority of the people in my neighborhood and the Southeast Texas region underwater. We took on a little bit of water in the garage, but nothing inundated in the house. But it will also include that majority of the people's fences blew down. We remained unscathed. So for that note, I can say that this holds up to high winds which is fantastic to note so other than that i've had no bowing no warping no splitting no rotting and that's another great feature about this modular fence is this section of wood here is three treated two by fours which amounts to about 15 dollars worth of repair material if you were to rot mildew anything that needed to be replaced that's how much it costs it's really simple so other than that, I, there's nothing I would change about the design of the fence at this point. Popular question number two, the dado groove. I've had a number of comments from seemingly experienced carpenters and woodworkers saying that this 3 8 by 1 inch depth in my 2x4 is too deep. I'm not saying they're wrong, and they're probably right. I have no experience with woodworking other than this, but to date, I haven't had any issues of splitting, warping, mildewing, anything of that nature and you got to remember that this thing is encased in a frame that is held up by three sides strong sides so literally the only weight that these grooves are holding up this bottom one is about nine pounds of wire and for that it's really sturdy i did mention in part one that i was going to come through and zip quarter inch weep holes which i've done about every six to eight inches and i checked with a bottle of water to make sure it drains and it does sufficiently for that matter now there's one thing that I will say that's a kind of a, a drawback on it. It does accumulate biomatter. And by that, that's leaves, grass clippings, pine needles, dead bugs, things like that. But it's nothing that I can't take the leaf blower to and blow straight out right after I got done doing the lawn. So uh, other than that, this thing's holding up great. The third and final question is the panel fence itself. A lot of people are concerned on if it's too flimsy or if it's sturdy enough for the job that it is. And this does kind of fall in with the strength of the dado groove itself, but there's been a lot of questions on whether or not this thing will pop out. And to be honest with you, I think that this thing will maintain anything shy of a rogue lawnmower or an ATV riding through it. I mean, I'm 6'1", 180 pounds, and that's not, that's almost all my weight, and it's not coming out, and it goes back into its spot. I've been really impressed with the sturdiness of this design. I mean, it maintains my 200 pound Mastiff, 60 pound Aussie, who's actually more aggressive than a Mastiff, well, I say up against the fence anyway, not aggressive. But uh, other than that, there are a few spots of surface rust, but it was definitely worth getting the one that was galvanized. It cost a little bit more than the standard six by eight stuff, but uh, at $50 a panel, it, it, that was probably the most expense with this whole fence panel, but any uh, 
severe rusting, you can hit with coal galvanizing spray to fix that problem. But other than that, even in the dado groove, I haven't seen any significant rusting. So other than that, I'm really happy with this design. Ultimately, between the sturdiness in 18 months, the groove holding up and it's still sturdy, and the material holding together, and it outlasting windstorms, I mean, what's not to like? If that doesn't boost your confidence for this, I don't know what will. <laughs> Go get a panel fence or something else. But uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy with this fence so far. So let's get to the main part, staining. All right, what do you say we get part two of this fence project underway? Stain protection. Now I did mention before I'm a few months behind on my stain protection, but I'm definitely not too late. And the reason for this is you wanna allow an adequate drying time of your pressure treated wood before you apply any staining, or it could resist the staining altogether. Now there's different variables to the drying time that could be from your climate, temperature, humidity, wetness, rain, all different variables like that that can prolong the amount of drying time for many weeks to months. In my case, I checked about six months ago and I still had a few boards around my fence that were retaining moisture. So I'm, I'm still within a marginal area of acceptable time to stain. And there's a few ways of being able to check this stain. One is the bead test. Bead test, you just drip little drops of water on top or around where the fence is. And if it stays bubbled on top, you're still retaining moisture in your wood and you do not want to stain. If it goes in like it's staining and flattens out into the wood, it's definitely time to stain. There's another method which is called the nail test. And the nail test is you take a simple nail and you poke just shy into the wood and if it displaces a little bit of moisture, you're definitely retaining and you need to wait a little bit longer. In our case, our wood is definitely dry and ready to stain. How about we go over some of these essential products for you to be able to stain your fence. Priority one in any project is your safety. You definitely want to make sure you have the proper PPE for the project you're doing. Today we'll be using eye protection, face protection, and gloves. And the reason for this is we'll be using a pressurized sprayer and an airless unit for applying the stain. And you definitely want to have eye protection and face protection or a mask to keep you from inhaling or get it in your eyes. The gloves we'll be using because we'll have a sanding block and some sandpaper taking care of some of the fence and you want to keep your hands nice and clean and you don't want to get any abrasive cuts or uh, scrapes on there as well. We'll be using some rubber gloves. These are the only gloves that I had that were rubber at the time, but you definitely want to get some that are your household rubber gloves so you don't get bleach burn. So that about wraps up our PPE. Let's get on to the rest of the materials. The essential materials you'll need, I'm gonna go ahead and start with some of the cleaning materials and then we'll get over to the staining products and stuff like that. So, first of all, you'll need some bleach. It doesn't have to be the big jug. As long as you're doing a half and half uh, dilution in a bucket or in a dedicated sprayer, you should be just fine. And the reason for the bleach is for mildew. Any spots that are green or has got scale, you wanna hit it with some Clorox to make sure the mildew is eradicated and you'll want to have a stiff brush. This is the only one I have at this point, but you could use a big bristle brush. Just don't use a metal brush. That could probably scale up your, your wood. You wanna make sure you have an adequate length water hose for doing the whole project all the way around the property or whatever the length that you're needing. So not necessarily do you need a pressure washer to clean this, but it's gonna make it a lot faster. But you can do this with a garden hose if you have an adequate sprayer that allows you for the high pressure nozzle. So in this case, we're gonna use both. I have the water hose. I do have the sprayer nozzle on there for representation, but I'll definitely be using the pressure washer in this. And you wanna have around a 2000 PSI. You don't wanna go much more than that because you might potentially get too far into the wood and uh, it could actually damage the wood. You wanna have some sand scrubbers or sandpaper to go over any scuffs that you may have hit with the weed eater or dog chewing or anything like that just to make sure that it's all nice and buffed down. You want to have some masking tape. Uh, not sure how protecting you want to be over your fence. In my case, I just want the stain to be on the fence. I don't necessarily need it to be a perfect situation, but to each their own. In this case, you probably want to have masking tape for some situations. You definitely want to have a drop cloth. Not necessarily for your project of hanging up or anything like that, but you want it for the grass or any kind of foliage that you have going around if you have a garden or plants around. You want to cover this up because if you're spraying stain, you don't want it to get on there because it could wither or damage or kill your plants for that matter. So your drop cloth is more or less for protection purposes as it would be in your house, just more or less for the grass and the greenery around. I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do as far as masking just yet. I may trim out a piece of 
cardboard and a way to affix it in so I can avoid getting some of the wire panel with stain on there. But step two of that, I don't have one sitting here, but make sure you have a cloth available. I'm thinking about just going through, wiping down, spraying down or whatever on the fence, the, the wood part of the fence. And if it gets onto the panel itself, I'm just gonna to try to wipe it off. If it works that way, I'll let you know and I'll show it in the video later on. But you definitely wanna have this drop cloth and some kind of method of protecting your fence, not the wood part, but the metal part if you don't wanna get stain on it. Again, I don't know how bad it's going to be as far as staining the metal, but I'm not really worried about it. Painting essentials as far as application. We're gonna do three methods. It's going to be a roll-on method, you want to have a natural bristle brush, bristle brush, na natural bristle brush, and we're going to use two methods of spraying. Apparently, it works really good, the, the particular stain we're using, in a pump up sprayer, but we're going to give this airless a try. I gave them a call and they said it's mo more than acceptable to be using this. And I went with Ready Seal for this application. Ready Seal, why? Well, it is number one dummy proof which means it's John proof which means it's going to be really easy to do this project but the best part about it I did a lot of research on it it doesn't require dilution it doesn't require priming the fence you don't have to worry about it lapping or showing lapping lines you don't have to worry about following the wet spot to make sure your application doesn't leave lines and it is the consistency of water so it can be worked in uh, all three methods pump up sprayer airless sprayer or just rolled on and as a state pride note they're based out of the great state of texas so i figured i'd go with them that route but that's not the decision ultimately i just it, it's a great product i'll leave a few links below of the actual ready seal people i'm not affiliated with them and just using their product i'll show a few links down below of how they apply it and it's pretty much a no-brainer so how about we get to cleaning the fence all right, it's time for the next step in this project, the high pressure cleanse. For some, this is gonna be the most fun and for others, it could actually be therapeutic. You'll need at least, as mentioned before, a optional high pressure water hose nozzle like this where you can go either jet or full, or you can opt like we have for the high pressure pressure washer. Now keep in mind, you don't wanna exceed more than about 2000 PSI, plus or minus some, you'll be fine. You just don't wanna to penetrate too far into the wood and gouge it up. And the method we're gonna do with that is gonna be from top to bottom, side to side. That way, anything you cleanse goes down. It's just kind of a method you do. Number one step with the pressure washer is fill it with fuel. Sometimes you'll end up getting one and not think about, oh shoot, fuel. So fill it with fuel. Step two, always make sure that the water is on and connected to the pressure washer before you start it. And then step three, obviously, is PPE. So get your, at least your earmuffs, ear buds if that's the case i'm not sure if eye goggles are necessary but in case there's any backsplash we're just going to be safe better to be safe than sorry i suppose all right as you can see that went pretty quick and it's definitely cleaning the fence and we're just going to do that all the way around both inside and outside shouldn't take too long and then the best part after this is you get to actually rest so don't get any rush you're gonna have to let it sit for a few days. It's about to rain, so I figured I'd at least knock out this pressure washing just before it rains, that way it's already wet. It'll be part of the drying process, and then it'll be mostly, if not already clean by the time we get to the stain part in a few days. So stay tuned. All right, high pressure cleanse complete. Man, that wasn't too bad. 25 minutes took to do 207 foot both front and back, not too bad. If this wet wood is anything of an example of what this pecan stain is going to look like, huh, I'm really excited about it. But yeah, I used a 40 degree nozzle on my pressure washer. There was some few spots where I had to get pretty close. So if you're going to use a garden hose, you might want to have a scrubber ready to go to get some high scale areas. But other than that, it was really quick to do. But now I'm just got to let the wood dry. Oh. Be very mindful. If you already have animals that inhabit your backyard, you might want to take a lap and pick up any of the poo that might be laying out there because uh, you don't want to drag your water hose or spigot nozzles or anything through that. I have a mastiff and I found out the hard way. That was not an anthill I stood in earlier, if you get my drift. But other than that, next step, mildew, then stain. Stay tuned. The next step you want to do is mildew and mold removal. So you've already gone through and done a really high pressure rinse of your fence or you've used a high pressure 
jet or full stream of the nozzle of your water hose, whatever you have available, and you find that you've got a section that still has a mildew or something of that nature, you want to go after it with bleach. Now I've already pre-mixed half and half the amount of water as bleach. And I went ahead and found an actual dust band brush that I'm going to use because it's a little bit more surface area than this brush. And I found a Scotch-Brite pad. So we're going to try it out either way. And I mentioned earlier, definitely have a rag available. What I'm going to do is I'm going to soak up this rag. Definitely put on your gloves first. But I'm soak up this rag and I'll wipe it on the area. I'm going to let it sit for a few minutes. Then I'm going to come back and I'm going to try it with all of these different kinds so you get a better idea of which one actually works, if they work at all. Now you see a lot of it's already coming off with just wiping it like that. But we're going to let that bleach sit and soak into that mildew for a second. Then we're going to come back and brush it off and then spray it off with either your hose or come back with your pressure washer. In this case, I'm going to do the hose just to see how much work it does and then we always know that the pressure washer is going to do its job. So. I think I've done about the same amount of wiping on that and we're going to see just how on um, those little sections of methods of using which one works the best. So obviously if it doesn't work the first time I'm going to come back and do it until it's right but this is just to give you an idea of what's going on. It's set on the jet setting for now. We'll see. Well, looks like we got a little bit of a storm rolling in. But you can still see a little bit of a green on there. I'm actually going to try this scotch bright pad on with the bleach and see if that oops a little slippery with the glove all right i'm going to tell you that that's probably the way to go let's switch this up to the full As you can see, the majority of the green is definitely gone. It was a very concentrated area. I'm gonna work with this a little bit longer, but you get the idea. Half and half bleach, put on your gloves, wipe it down, scotch bright pad. Try that. All right, it's time to stain. It's been two days since we pressure washed, and I've just walked the perimeter of the fence, kind of just doing a quick dust off in case there was any kind of dirt or debris or pollen that got on the fence in the past two days since we've been letting it dry. Fortunately, the rain happened, and uh, we've just been letting it dry since. A few things before you stain. You wanna make sure you're wearing some not so good clothes. Uh, this was, was a favorite shirt, but I got some bleach on it. Good to go there, just regular outdoor pants and uh, make sure you remove your rings or watches. Anything that can get stained or if you get uh, stain up underneath your rings, it could actually really irritate your skin. So make sure you play it safe there. Have your gloves ready to go, eye protection and uh, sunblock if it's sunny out like it is now so uh, let's get to staining I'm gonna start with the brush and do some rolling methods and then get to the spraying so stick around before you apply any coatings to any project you want to make sure you read the instructions on the can of how to prepare it in this case big black letters on a yellow sticker it says turn over and shake well so that's what we're gonna do it's not uncommon for stains to have the color build up at the bottom and if you don't shake it properly, it could end up thinning up top. You apply your stain, it'd be rather thin. You get down to the bottom, it actually go on a different color as you go around. Uh, with paint, you would have stir or one of the mixers or whatnot. But this one, like I said, it's a water consistency. It feels like water. It's not like paint, bloom, bloom, bloom. It's, it's actually really nice. So turn it upside down, shake it. And you want to have a tool. There is a special key for getting the tops off. I've misplaced mine, but I'm going to use a screwdriver. It should be fine. So I'm going to fill these up and uh, show the application. By the way, I did find the paint key. It was underneath the paint tray, imagine that. So that's what you can use besides a flathead screwdriver. All right, I don't know if you can really see in there, but it's definitely a consistency of water. It's pretty dark stuff. Got a natural bristle brush here. I figured I'm gonna go ahead and start just doing the insides to keep it off this fence area. I don't really think it matters to be honest, but I have my white rag here in case I get it on here and I don't like the color of it. So here we go. You want to start at the top and cascade it down. You want to 
to make it sure it stays absolutely wet. You don't want your brush drying out. You want to make sure you get good and into the grains of wood. Remember this stuff is self-leveling, so you kind of just let it do its thing and cascade down. That actually went on pretty quick. We're going to do this outside post here. I don't know if it's doing it justice on the camera, but other than it just being wet, it looks really good. Next, we're going to do the roller. I have a medium nap, good for most applications, and as you can see, the stuff's very watery. I'm just going to do the top rail, see how that turns out. I'm going to pull this over here to the side, get that nice and saturated, and just roll it on. And literally that fast. Wow, that looks so good. I'm probably using a very much longer roller than I need. So I would recommend probably getting one that's half this size and it'd be just fine. But that literally just rolled on in one second. <laughs> really impressive. Go down the edge, come back down this way, and you got your same fence. Do the verticals. Oh yeah, that's awesome. Careful because there is a lot of splash coming from the roller. It looks like the vertical posts, it definitely applies very well to those. I mean that was just a couple seconds of doing the fence with the roller. So now let's try with the spray. The moment we've all been waiting for, the spraying portion. I have my one gallon pump up sprayer that I've got about half full. Got my eye protection, face protection. We're gonna time this starting at 30 seconds after. Just doing this and we're not trying to do this for speed but ideally it took 35 seconds to do that whole portion with the pump up sprayer i think this is what we're going to continue using feel free to use your brush or roller or whatever you have available to you i don't even think i'm going to pull out the wagner because this is just going so well we've just completed the initial stain of the interior of the fence and i have to say it looks outstanding it's a little bit darker than we expected but that's not a big deal we're going to do a full evaluation in a couple days see if it lightens up a bit have no fear of spraying over onto the galvanized fence because it easily wipes away with a rag. We've been continuing that method all the way around and it's working out pretty good. How did the stain turn out? Well, I can honestly say I'm really impressed with it. It's been about 10 days since the initial staining took place and I'm glad I waited this long to do the evaluation because my initial plan was to be 48 hours, but after about 48 hours, it had only just gone from the rich chocolatey goodness that it was. I wasn't upset with the color of the fence after staining. Obviously, it was still wet and soaking in, but it didn't soak in fast enough for my expectations, I guess, and it was really dark. But after about the third day, I started noticing this really nice light beautiful coloring coming in and then we had a really outstanding rain on the fourth day and it kind of lightened up a little bit more and I could see all the swirls starting to develop in the wood and the grains and just really happy with that then it rained on the sixth day and I didn't notice any change in color which means that it was more or less locked in by that time and honestly it looks outstanding. The grain, everything about it, it was such an easy process. The one thing I will have to recommend is that you use a drop cloth. Actually, the one part in the video, I did not use the drop cloth in front of me. It stained the grass right there. I noticed that it got overspray and I used a drop cloth all the way around. Definitely use a drop cloth. Other than that, evaluation for the fence. As I mentioned earlier, there is absolutely nothing I would change about this fence design. It's strong. Despite what any have said, I don't know the longevity of it yet. We're at 18 months, but it's held in my dogs. Obviously, he's not going anywhere. It's the Aussie I have to worry about, but it has just been a great fence. The people in the neighborhood love it so much that some of them have built this. The people around the world love it so much that I've sent it to thousands of people. This fence is for you. And more incentive, if you want this fence, 
check the description below. I have PDF details available to you with an Excel Dropbox and everything for you. And if not, I'll have my email address down there for you to send to me and I will send you the links myself. So other than that, evaluation wise, I couldn't be happier. I can see through my fence, the wind blows. Oh, it's so beautiful. This one's for you. Have a good one, guys. Thank y'all.